Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar in Facility, Security, All Roads, and Doors Lead to Identity and Access Management. I'm Jennifer Getz, the Editorial Director of Facility Ex Executive Magazine, and this webinar is presented by Alert Enterprise. Before we get started, I'll cover a few housekeeping items. Our speakers are on video today, and if you would like to view them along the top of your screen, look for the bar in your window to pull down so they are visible to you. Next, please note the control panel on your screen. This is where you can submit questions via the question box at any time. There will be a Q&A portion after this presentation, so please type your questions there to send them to us. If at any time you experience a, techn a technical difficulty, please send us a message via the question section and someone on our team will answer you privately. Also, please note the orange arrow on the left side of your control panel. Clicking on that arrow will either expand or collapse the control panel. So please be sure the panel is expanded so you can access the question box. And if you're interested in continuing education credits, please note that you'll receive a certificate of attendance in an email from facility executive after this webinar. You can report to your association for the credit. At the bottom of this webinar, there are downloadable resources available for you to reference. Now I'll introduce your speakers. Jamshed Patel is the Vice President of Value Engineering for Alert Enterprise. He uses his expertise in machine learning and artificial intelligence to help customers and prospects gain new insights, predict outcomes, and automate human tasks leveraging Alert Enterprise's identity access management and security platform. Throughout his 25-year career, Jamshed has held executive leadership positions at the world's leading technology companies and high-growth startups, including Workday, Oracle, and Datavisor. Willem Brian is the Senior Vice President Marketing and Communications for Alert Enterprise. He is responsible for overseeing Alert Enterprise's global marketing and communication strategy, building brand awareness, and supporting pipeline growth and market expansion worldwide. Mr. Ryan joined Alert Enterprise in 2019 and brings more than 15 years of successful sales, product, and marketing experience in establishing a heightened presence of global brands in the fiscal security industry. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for being here with us today. Thanks. Hi, Jim. Hi. Awesome. So today we're going to kick off today's webinar with um, our first poll question. Um, so what's your return to office plan? Um, we'd like you to select one of the following, um, full-time, in-person, hybrid model, fully remote. Um, you'll have about 30 seconds to respond. Excited to see what the results are here for this. Okay, the results are in. So it's pretty evenly split uh, with full time in person being 42% and hybrid model being 45%. Um, fully remote is actually the lowest uh, with 12%. Yeah, you know, Jen, that's thanks for everyone for uh, jumping in there and engaging on that first poll question. And um, I have to say that's pretty much what I expected. All the data that we see, um, all the reports that we see out there. Uh, have showed, depending on the industry, depending on the uh, employees' uh, um, roles, around 40 to 60 percent um, are are going to be hybrid models, and of course, certain industries require full time in person. So um, it's it's right in line with that. So um, thank you again for participating uh, in our first poll question, um, and that actually really gets into our presentation. So first off. Thank you for joining us uh, today on behalf of Jamshed and everyone at Alert Enterprise. Uh, we are so happy that you joined us today live. And for those who are gonna be listening recorded, uh, welcome as well. Um, so let's just jump right into it. We're gonna do a little bit of a different format. I'm gonna be asking Jamshed some questions. He's gonna be answering them and we're gonna have an interactive discussion. And then there's gonna be more opportunities for you to engage in our poll questions. So Jamshed, let's get right into it. Uh, as we saw here, we have 45% are moving to a hybrid model. So that's going to change a lot of things in terms of the role of facility security. So what do you think are going to be some of the biggest challenges for facility security in this post-COVID and new era of hybrid work? Hey, well, uh, thanks. Uh I, I wanted to thank the audience as well for your active participation and for your time on this webinar today. Um, I think when we think about what has changed, the the poll question is a, is a great indicator of that, right? If I'm, I'm, I can bet you that if you had taken this poll three years back, right, two years back before COVID, 
the numbers would have been dramatically different. Uh, but as you can tell, the, the nature of work has changed fundamentally uh, since COVID. Uh, there are a lot of industries where you know, workers and, and employees and contractors and so on have to come into work. Uh, but equally, and, and, and especially if in, from the sort of commercial real estate perspective and office buildings and so on, increasingly you're going to find that it, most employees who even come back to the office are going to do so in some kind of a hybrid model. I think there's one even more fundamental change, which is that companies can no longer, many, most companies I should say, can no longer mandate that their employees come into the office. And so it, it's imperative for companies who are trying to sort of move back into the in-office model because that does bring with it a lot of efficiencies. Uh, they have to make that experience compelling to 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 their employees, and I think that's that's sort of the biggest challenge that companies face in the post-COVID era is how do we make the um, the workplace, the facility really a compelling and a welcoming place for employees in, in, in this new era. So if you can go to the next slide, right? Uh, these, this, this next slide here highlights some of the common challenges that employees and visitors face when they visit a workplace. Um, so, you know, a great example is an employee is onboarded, they're excited to start, they show up at the office and their badge hasn't been properly set up or all of their accesses haven't been correctly set up. Um, or once in a while, you'll have a situation where an employee comes in and their badge suddenly stops working. And it might work in one area, but it might stop working in another area that they need access to. Um, the, the other uh, part of this is when you think about job and safety training, uh, a lot of industries, especially the regulated industries, place a very, very heavy emphasis on making sure that their employees are, are, are trained, right? Have the right certifications in order to be able to access certain facilities and or, or certain control rooms or certain critical work areas. And ensuring that is of critical importance of to maintaining the safety of the workplace. There's many, many uh, you know, accidents that have happened because employees or, or people are visiting areas, critical in infrastructure areas uh, without the right levels of certification and training associated with that. Um, the other aspect of that is the security aspect, right? I've spoken to folks that said they recently found a contractor who had left the company year, six years back, six years, and they still they realized that the person still had access to their facilities. Most companies find that you know when people leave, whether it's an employee or whether they've terminated a contractor or, or however, that the person continues to have access for days, if not weeks, and sometimes months after they leave. And, and it's, it's a lot easier for companies to just give everybody a lot of access versus you know, making sure that they're operating in a zero trust environment where they're only giving access when it's needed and where it's needed. And so you know, this causes a, a increased risk of insider threats. And as you can see from the graphic on the right there, 60% of all data breaches today, right, which are a huge cause of concern for companies are, are a result of insider threats. And a lot of that is a direct function of a person having more access in the environment than they should have. So if you go to the next slide after this, uh, we, you know, when we, when, when we talk about kind of why this experience can be poor in, in many cases, a big part of that reason is that the system, the data in these systems is distributed, right? The data about a person, about an individual, about an identity is distributed across many different systems. You have the core employee information and could be in an HR system. You have, you know, a separate system. Sometimes it's homegrown. Sometimes it's, it's like, you know, a, a, a software product that is used to manage contractors. Um, you have physical access control systems that have their own identities. You have, travel systems, you know, procurement systems and so on that have other identities. You may have OT systems, operational systems that are used in many regulated industries and manufacturing organizations and so on that have their own. And that lack of coordination between all of these systems leads to that poor employee performance. If you can go to the next slide there, Will. Um, and, and so, you know, the, the, the big challenge for for organizations in terms of being able to provide a good experience and a secure experience is bridging those gaps. Well, it's not just us that's saying it. The Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, this is the agency that is tasked 
with securing our most critical assets in, in, in our country, right? This agency has, has highlighted, they had a great report on the importance of cyber physical convergence. And they, they, they were one of the first to highlight the critical importance of, the, of, of combining uh, and, and bridging the silos between cybersecurity and information security and physical security. And they highlight in the report how a lot of the issues that you see as security issues, you know, gaps can be le exploited by, by people who mean harm by, by taking advantage of these gaps. And so they have made a very strong recommendation that uh, both sides of the house, right, whether you think about the CISO, whether you think about the chief security officer or the IT officer and so on, they all collaborate and, and have a, a solution that bridges all of those gaps. If you can go to the next slide, Will. So, so the, 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 the other part of this equation here is the costs for not doing this. Uh, increasingly, there are, especially for many of the industries, regulated industries for sure, but even non-regulated industries like finance have very uh, critical compliance requirements that are expected. So as an example, in the financial services industry, you have uh, training that's required, PCI training that's required. Uh, and you want to make sure that an employer has had that or the training is current before they are given access to, uh, to, to their clients' uh, personal information. Similarly for HIPAA, HIPAA laws are, are very, very focused in the healthcare space on maintaining patient privacy and patient security. And violations of those HIPAA laws, if advertently or inadvertently, can result in massive fines to their organizations. Other examples, there's many, many examples. Here's another example is around compliance and auditing for util electric utilities, which are governed by NERC SIP standards. And the NERC, NERC is the North American um, you know, Electric Regulatory Agency. And you know, they have levied fines as high as millions of dollars on companies that they have found to be in violation of their compliance laws and, and, and rules. And in addition to these compliance fines, you, you, there's even bigger issues with, with data breaches in general and data breaches that are a result of insider threats. And in, in net, when you look at the cost of not enforcing the right controls can, can run into millions or tens of millions of dollars for most companies. So if you can go to the next slide, Will. Well, before we go to the next slide, we actually have a poll question um, that we'd like to address. Um, so how converged are your cyber and physical security teams? Um, fully converged in mission and technology, somewhat converged, we align sometimes, or rubric in silos? So you have about 30 seconds. Yes, I'm really interested in seeing this as well. Um, this is a, such a you know, a subject that's near and dear to our heart, but I think uh, a lot of people um, are, are starting to think about this in a different way. So let's see where people end up in the convergence world. Yeah, I'm very curious to see the results as well. Okay, so the results are in. Um, we have 27% for full, fully converged in mission and technology, 39% for somewhat converged, we align sometimes, and 33% said we work in silos. Wow, yeah, really, really compelling. Again, thank you for participating. So uh, I'll make a quick comment and jump in. Maybe you want to jump in as well. So I think from my experience talking with customers, prospects, um, They've all agreed that this is something we need to address. So I think most people, you, you'll rarely find anyone that says no, cyber and physical security should never be together. It, it happens, but I think the vast majority of people believe that, yeah, we need to figure out how we um, converge and at least unify our mission for, for security within an organization. Um, but there are some challenges, both culturally between IT and physical security, and between um, the ways that uh, technology can bring it together. Um, so I think there is an opportunity, a huge opportunity, um, to help companies find a path towards security convergence. What are your thoughts, Jamshan? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Well, I think, you know, firstly, congratulations to the roughly quarter of the respondents who said that they are fully converged in terms of both mission and technology. That is really great to hear and, and keep up that good work. 
Um, obviously, for the, the remaining three quarters of respondents who have responded and said that they are either somewhat converged or not converged, I think that this is going to be one of the critical uh, cr critical areas that that of focus that's going to be needed to make sure that there's no security gaps that that exist between these silos. There's a huge amount of implication here, not just in terms of sec security and compliance, but also in terms of things like segregation of duties, where someone with a lot of uh, access in in the IT world, for example, should not have the same corresponding level of access in the physical world. Otherwise, there could be cases of theft, for example, that could go undetected or there could be even greater security uh, you know, issues that, that pop up as a result of, uh, of, of, of these gaps. Absolutely, so let's keep it moving and into the next question. So you've just described sort of the, the case for convergence. Um, you've also talked about how the challenges is not only coming back to work, but um, making it a good experience. So that just begs the questions. How do you make it a great workplace access and security experience for employees to come back to the office? In other words, make it a friction-free or frictionless and smooth experience. Oh, this is going to be my favorite uh, section, I think. So if you go to the next slide, well, um, you know, when we when we think about, you know, how, you know, what makes a great experience, we got to think first about who are the different personas, who are who are the folks that we're talking about here, right? And there's a few distinct personas. There's obviously more, but I would say most people would fall under one of these four categories. First is the building managers, right? These are the folks that 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 are usually employed by the, the, the either the owners of the building or the managers, operating managers of the building, to manage sort of the overall building function, as well as the sort of core lobby area when you first come in there. And when you, when you talk about kind of you know what their needs are right you need to be able to provide a solution that gives them visibility and control over everybody who come enters the building and an equally important right their lobby management function should be extremely well coordinated with the tenants of the building so a building could have you know one or more tenants obviously if it has just one tenant that's you know that's that's easier but in, in a lot of cases, you know, buildings could have different tenants and each of those tenants could use a different uh, access control system or different software to manage their access. So, so that's, that's critical for building, uh, building managers. Their counterparts are the tenant managers or the tenant admins. And they are the, 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 the essentially they manage the sub lobby, so to speak, or, or the, the access access within the building you know to certain floors or to certain areas within the building that may be uh, that may be leased by a particular tenant and their critical needs are being able to manage the access needs for their employees with automated workflows so you know they usually end up getting inundated with tickets you know or, or, or requests to for all kinds of requests for you know providing badges or, or or issuing new badges and so on and so forth and we want to automate a lot of that work as much as possible so that they can really focus on the on, on, you know, on providing a, a great service and a great customer experience to their employees. Uh, the other critical area there is policy-driven access and employee intelligence. So as, as, a, as an admin, right, and, and knowing who's coming in, what they're accessing, you know, whether there is a risk associated with that access is important for them to be aware of so that they can not just provide a great experience for their employees, but provide security and, and a safe, secure working environment as well. The next sort of area that's critical is tenant employees and tenant visitors. So when you think about the employees of your tenants, they need to have a, a easy to use self-service experience that allows them to manage their own access needs as much as possible. So instead of having to go through and, and request access and, and go through a cumbersome process and wait for days to, for the request to get processed, they need to be able to go into a site or go into an app on their mobile phones and be able to very quickly respond and say, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm moving from, you know, if I'm a manager, for example, you know, my employee is moving from group A into group B. So their access needs to change to reflect that, for example, right? And the, 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 the manager or the employee themselves, if they need a new badge or replacement badge, or they want to activate a credential or they want to use, you know, they need new mobile credentials for something, they need to be able to do that in a very easy way. Um, and, and then on the tenant visitor side, right, you have easy pre-registration of the visit. So you want that experience to be frictionless, being able to rapidly check in and check out 
and be able to be secure because you want to be able to go through all the automated screening depending on the industry that the tenant is in they might require visitors to go through enhanced levels of screening against specific checklists so if we can move to the next slide um, and, and and this is really really critical is when you think about um, if you can go to the to the build out as well yeah thank you you know when we think about the you know what's what's needed right it's it's kind of being able to provide the services all the way from hire to retire we talked about having the importance of having all of the right access on the first day at job right but it's also equally important to make sure that all the access is terminated when when the employee leaves the company um, you know you you can see many examples that we have highlighted in red on the screen here but you know, one example, I was recently talking to a, a, a colleague in another company, and they talked about you know, how often they visited other sites. They, they, they happened to be in a, in a consulting role, and they used to visit different locations within that same company in different sites, and how much time and how cumbersome it was to request access, get a temporary badge assigned each time they went to one of their other sites. And you know, think about how much easier it would be if the travel system was able to talk to the um, to the physical access control system and say, hey, you know, I know this employee is going to be traveling from location A to location B, and they're going to need access to all of the sites or the particular site in location B from this date to this date, and without having to do, you know, to, to go through any, any rigorous process to make that, that, that happen. If you can go to the next slide, well, um, Actually, before we move on to the next slide, we actually have another poll question. Um, how soon are you planning on deploying mobile credentials? Uh, select one of the following. You're already mo using mobile credentials um, within 12 months, within two years, or you have no plans to deploy mobile credentials. Um, you have about 30 seconds. Oh, this is such an important area as, as the world moves to mobile, right? Um, you know, as, as, you know as increasingly more and more, especially the younger generation, um, you know, more and more folks are relying on on their phones for everything, right? I mean, including for payments and for, you know, getting their, um, you know, access to literally everything else. And so being able to give them a, a good experience using their mobile device is, is going to be critical. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I oh, do we have so the results? Yet? Yes, we do. Um, so actually, the most is 40% uh, and it's for no plans to deploy mobile credentials followed by they're already using mobile credentials with 37%. And there's uh, within two years is 13% and within 12 months is 10%. Yeah, it's really curious. I wonder what the barriers are. Um, and I look forward to maybe some questions uh, in the chat uh, as we, we get to Q&A. Um, you know, what are some of the barriers that are uh, holding you back from mobile credentials right now? Um, supply chain, is it? Um, pricing, technology, um, integration, uh, those would be really interesting things to discuss and, and hear about that. I had one uh, customer said, if I can board a plane, I can order food, I can, um, you know, hail a, a, a ride um, on my phone, why can't I get in the building um, doing the same thing in, uh, with my phone? Uh, and I think that's a, it's a fair question, don't you think, Jonathan? Yeah, I, I'm actually kind of surprised to see the that this 40% are responding that they have no plans to deploy mobile credentials. And I think that, you know, even when you think about the security aspects of that, right, a physical badge is easier to steal. Um, and it's, 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 it's not, you know, always that people will check and make sure that the photos match the badge and so on. Whereas if you have a mobile credential, you can enforce a higher level of security with uh, with a you know biometric you know like a fingerprint scan or a facial recognition scan and so on and tie that in with the actual credential so that you can ensure that a third you know no one else is using your badge or your credential. Yeah, let's um, continue on. I did see as we move forward. I did see a, a report recently that said that they predict that the physical ID and the physical badge may disappear by 2030. But by the sounds of it. Um, we may have a little bit longer before we get there. So it'd be interesting to, to talk about that in the Q&A. So next question, <laughs> excuse me. Um, we've talked about, you know, accessing buildings and um, ensuring that it's a smooth experience, but it seems like as we move forward with a hybrid environment, um, hybrid work model, that the use of space, so space utilization and optimizing space 
is going to be a key objective for facility executives going forward. So can you explain to the audience how can physical identity access management and security, the data that's contained within that, play a key role in those areas? It, this is especially important in the post-COVID world because as we discussed earlier, you know, it, there, there is a large percentage of, of employees now and building tenants and their, their employees and contractors and so on who, are, who have moved from a full-time role into more of a hybrid role. And uh, if you go to the next slide, well, this gives an opportunity to these tenants um, as well as to, to, the, to the real estate management companies, this gives opportunities to better utilize their real estate footprint, potentially you know, sublease areas that, you know, that, that they don't need and consolidate their real estate footprint. You know, it, it, it's got a lot of advantages to it. And I'll, I'll give you some examples. People might think about it as, oh, this is better from a cost perspective, right? If, if, I'm, a, if I'm a company that's reducing my real estate footprint, let's say that some of my employees work on Mondays and Wednesdays and other ones work on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, and if I can, I can use this information, this intelligence to be able to consolidate my real estate footprint, well, I can save money. Yes, that's important. But equally important, a lot of companies now are focusing on environmental and sustainability goals. And as we look to, you know, as, as, as large companies, you know, large energy companies, for example, are making commitments to be, uh, to be net zero in terms of their environmental footprint and emissions footprint. Um, as, as we look to kind of how they're achieving this, they're achieving this in, in a large part by reducing their environmental footprint and also by increasing their carbon offsets and so on, right? And so when you think about, you know, this is true, especially in, 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 in Europe and other, you know, other countries, but also increasingly true in the U.S., is, is how do you is consolidate your footprint both to save cost as well as making it possible for your company overall to accelerate and meet its ESG goals. Um, you know, you can see here as an example, right, uh, one of the areas that, that is critical is to be able to have a very visual and key understanding of, of all of the offices that, that your company employs and being able to project and say, okay, I, you know, today we are here, right, in, in, in three months or in six months, we're going to be, uh, you know, at higher capacity utilization, lower capacity utilization, and be able to optimize your real estate footprint based on that information. Yeah, well, I, I know there was a, a large, one of our customers, a large financial uh, company in New York City, um, they were able to leverage this physical security data based on access um, to help their real estate team um, not only save costs, but also um, find opportunities for revenue based on leased um, spaces. So they were seeing where they could move employees, move certain tenants uh, as well, and then bring in new opportunities for, for leasing, um, all based on physical security data. So I think that's, that's a huge opportunity where security becomes a business enabler, not just uh, for safety and security. Agreed. Well, so if you want to go to the next, oh, that's another question. Yeah, so let's move to sort of the, the keys that can help this audience build out um, this new approach. So uh, what are some of the key technology pillars and the approaches that our listeners can use to build their hybrid work building access playbook around? That's a great question. Well, if you can go to the next slide here. So, you know, as we as we think about, you know, providing a great employee experience um, in, in, in the building space, you know, we talked about how we have to cater to all of the different personas. And it's very important for a, a, a you know, the, the, the console, right? So it's, it's essentially the, the, the management system that the building manager uses to be able to talk to all of the different tenant systems as well out there. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a simple example. I happen to be in London today visiting some customers here, and I was visiting one of our biggest software partners. It's a it's a major, you know, one of the top three or four software companies in the world, and they used to have about uh, 12 or 15 offices scattered around London, and and recently they consolidated that into a single location in a in a very uh, ritzy high end uh, you know uh, site in central London. And I was actually visiting it just today, so this is very timely. And I was trying to uh, check in as a visitor, and I, I had to sp spend some time waiting in line and, and getting checked in in the lobby. 
And then they issued me a temporary badge where I had to go through the turnstiles, go to the elevator, go up to the 20th floor, and I, I get off the floor and there's a the, the, the lobby for, for the partner that I'm talking about had no idea you know who I was and that, that I'd already checked in. So I had to go through that entire whole process all over again in their lobby. And you know what was even more surprising for me was even the employees of their companies that were coming in with us, they had to go through the same check-in process at the front lobby. So you can imagine what an inconvenience this is, right? And, and how poorly it impacts the employee experience. I mean, the building was amazing. I mean, it was an awesome building, but that check-in process was so tedious that it takes away from that, that good experience. In addition, it's of course expensive, right? Because the, 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 you know, the front lobby has to go through the whole sign-in process, and then you've got to repeat that whole process all over again when you get to the tenant lobby. And so I think that from a, a, a real estate building management function, right, we, we have, we have I, I'll give you an example at Hudson Yards in New York, right? We have, uh, you know, we, we provide the security for, for the building, but we also provide the security for a lot of the anchor tenants there, like face, you know, Meta, Facebook, um, you know, and, and, and others, uh, BlackRock and so on, who are, who are in that building. And, 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 and we have, you know, the, the ability to kind of be able to be coordinated between the tenant portals, you know, you know employees being able to request that access, being able to, you know, pre-register visitors and that information flowing through in a building console and so on is so important to a great employee experience, um, you know, both for employees, but also for visitors, right? Because you want to be able to avoid having to do, you know, double work. If you go to the next slide there, right? Um, the, you know, how, how do you achieve, right? The, the question becomes, how do you achieve this? And, and then well, how, what do you do with all of the information that you gather? Well, one of the things that we, we at Alert Enterprise do is we gather information because of our highly connected uh, solution. We are able to gather information from IT systems, from physical locations, from OT systems. You know, we're able to determine behavior patterns based on access patterns for employees. And, and, and based on all of this, we can create a very detailed and unified risk profile for each employee that allows us to mitigate the, the risk of insider threats. Um, if you go to the next slide there, I will, um, you know, and, and, and we talk about kind of, you know, other, other areas of access control, sort of when you think about kind of the future of access control, right? Um, it, it, it's in the area of policy-based control. So you know companies which have far-flung sites, right? They may have a site, the central headquarters office. They may have a site that's located in, you know, in in far-flung remote offices. The biggest risk that they face is that they are not able to enforce their corporate standards uniformly across all of these different locations. And what we need is a, is a strong, just you know, what what we provide is a strong policy-based access control that allows you to say, okay, contractors, as an example, should not be able to access a certain site uh, or secure areas or locations uh, within, you know, outside of their badging hours. But that requires that coordination with your time and attendance system to pull their work hours and their work schedules. It requires coordination with the, with the uh, you know, it could be a, 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 a field glass type, SAP field glass type system, which is managing the contractors. It requires coordination with the different PAC systems that, that may be employed at different sites. So, so having kind of all of that connectivity and, and that smooth workflow that goes across it allows us to enforce these corporate mandates across, across the globe, right, for, for a company. So if you go to the next slide there, right? Uh, you know, when we talk about experience, it's not just about the employee experience, it's about, it's about the visitor experience. How do you make that smooth? Where you want to make the check-in process very, very efficient and also very secure. So in a, in a lot of industries, when someone, you know, when you, you know, for example, when we, when someone schedules a meeting in a company, if the system, because of our integration with Microsoft Outlook, we can determine that there is an external employee and automatically send that person a registration link. Uh, when the person registers, they go through the full security, right? If if that particular industry requires them to go through a background check or checks against, you know, in the aviation field, it could be checks against certain FBI databases and so on. Uh, in the healthcare space, it could be other ones. Uh, we can ensure that we should do all those checks, you know, seamlessly, and then only enter folks once they have uh, once they have past all of that certification. So being able to provide, pulling all of these things together is what's critical in terms of being able to provide that right solution. If you can go to the next slide, Will. Oh, 
we actually have a, our final poll question to address. Um, is your visitor management currently digitized and automated? Um, and the options are fully digitized and automated, somewhat digitized in a manual process, or still using paper in a manual process. You have about 30 seconds. Yeah, we've talked a lot about visitor management, and, and it seems to be, uh, every time I talk to customers, one of the you know, biggest opportunities to add a layer of security. So I'm interested in seeing what happens here. Okay, the results are in. So the majority said somewhat digitized and a manual process with 48%. Um, in second, it was still using paper and a manual process at 42%, so pretty close. And then um, there was only 10% that said fully digitized and automated. Yeah, I think that's bang on. I mean, John said you just <laughs> you just had that experience um, quite relevant with you know one of the largest software um, companies in the world, and still there was a little bit of a um, manual repeat, um, you know, process that wasn't as smooth and frictionless as, as it could be. So um, this kind of stays in line with uh, your experience uh, this week. Any yeah, comments? Absolutely, on that? absolutely. And and it's the, the visitor part of the experience is so critical, right? It's it's important from efficiency. It's important from an experience perspective. It's important for the company brand. It's important for the building brand. And uh, you know, most importantly, it's it's important for security. Right, you want to be able to uh, to to vet whoever is visiting the org, you know, the organization. You know, if you need facial recognition, you know, a lot lot of industries will require you to upload your your state issued or nationally issued identification so that they can run the right background check. So having a fully automated and digitized process is critically important in this space. Yeah, huge opportunity. So, John said, let's land the plane and 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 bring this all together. So. As you have described and, and talked about um, the approach of converging physical cyber security together, integrating um, access across all of these different currently silos, um, you know, the, here's a time for a little bit of a shameless plug, but you know, how does Alert Enterprise bring this all together to provide a compelling solution for our audience and, and their tenants and their employees? Thank you, Will. And if you could go to the next slide, right? I think I think when you think about, you know, how do you bring all of this together? The goal should be to provide that 360 degree security solution across IT, across physical systems, and across OT systems. Uh, you know, if you look at this 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 picture here, this is how we at Alert Enterprise solve the problem. So the systems on the left are the source systems, the authoritative systems. Uh, we we connect to all of the you know standard or, or well-known uh, HR systems you know like SAP success factors like Workday like Oracle and others. Uh, we also connect to you know contracting systems like SAP Fieldglass. Um, you know we pull in information anytime an employee changes right or a contractor changes or anytime a temp worker comes in and and, and changes we 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 pull in that information. Um, and, and, and ensure that if access needs to be changed, if old access needs to be deprovisioned and new access needs to be provisioned, that all of that is, is smoothly executed as part of a digitized workflow. In addition to that, we also ensure that we drive active policy enforcement. You know, we check against background lists, we, ch we, we check against, we make sure that you, the, all of the learning and certifications that are needed to be able to gain the right type of access are all, all in place. Um, the other part is that we provide a self-service portal, and by doing that, we're able to automate a lot of requests and also improve the employee experience by enabling much faster response than have them having to call up an internal company help desk, the company help desk creating a ticket, that ticket flowing to the security organization, the person in the security or the badging office going through and, and you know, uh, and, you know, work, you know, trying to figure out all the right approvals and then making sure that the badge gets printed. And uh, you know that process can be very tedious and very expensive for companies, and we're able to automate all of that. And then you know we also talked about visitors, right? So you know being able to manage within a, an integrated, unified environment uh, the visitor system. So being able to plug into any of the you know specific visitor systems. And then an equally important component is the is a physical access control systems. A single building may have tenants who are using different access control systems. So you want to be able to talk to all of those. Um, 
you know, a, a single company may either through acquisition or through evolution have multiple access control systems for different sites <clears throat> and sometimes multiple access controls within a site as well, you know. And so, you know, being able to seamlessly connect to all of those and, and be able to manage that process in a unified way is, is critically important. Um, and, and, and so, you know, when we achieve that for our customers, what is the net result, right? So if you look at the, if you go to the next slide, right, these are some of the typical customer results that we are able to achieve. Um, typically, our, our customers will report that they're able to automate 75% of all of their access tickets and all of their access, you know, uh, areas of activity um, through our workflow-driven system. Um, you know, we've had customers report that they've seen, you know, especially in, in, in environments where there's a lot of movement of employees and so on, you know, they've seen, you know, significant productivity gains by employees. And then typically, you know, for a customer with say 30,000 employees, we, we, you know, as we look at an average across our customer base, right, we see over $15 million in savings, both in terms of direct costs, but also in terms of indirect costs, right? Um, like, you know, being able to retire some, you know, very manual and cumbersome processes and being able to replace it with a very smooth and integrated, you know, workflow over there. Uh, there's companies that have reported even more benefit by being able to tie in the information from their time and attendance systems with the information from their badging systems and, and identify, for example, one of our, our big, uh, you know, customers in the mining space has actually presented in multiple forums how our system has helped them save 90 million dollars in the US alone on their contingent worker spend because they were able to identify discrepancies between the times that the folks actually worked versus the time that the company was built. So it's it's a huge advantage to be able to bring all of this together and and we're very very happy and grateful to be able to help our customers achieve these results. Yeah, thanks Jamshed and you know what I love about seeing these kind of results is that you know for security it, it really puts um, uh, an amazing focus on security being in a business enabler, um, driving uh, business outcomes beyond just safety and security, um, but now helping to digitally transform and, and, and move the business in a positive way. Um, using security as that platform, I think, is a huge opportunity for professionals in the industry. And I've been in this industry almost 20 years and to be able to see this kind of evolution as we move to a more digitized, connected world. Um, represents a, a great opportunity for, for our prospects and our customers. So appreciate that. Um, I wanted to, to, to just wrap up, say thank you, of course, but um, I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What would you just recommend as a next step for our audience as they think about this? I think it's a compelling, um, a compelling approach and a new opportunity um, but perhaps unfamiliar to, to, to many. So, you know, what would you recommend as a next step for our audience as they hear this um, to take that journey to, you know, security convergence and, and a, an identity-led security approach? It's a great question, Will. I think that, you know, as, as we think about from an employee, you know, experience perspective, right, sort of changing the mindset. So as we think in the post-COVID world, right, before COVID, the primary driver of this was around providing security. I think as we think about the post-COVID world, you know, we also want to pay a lot of attention to the employee and the visitor experience um, of, of, of everybody who, who, who comes into the building, whether they're managing the building, whether they are, um, you know, whether they are coming into the building to do work, whether they're coming into the building to, to visit someone and so on and so forth. And so, you know, I would really encourage folks to kind of think about, you know, from a digital transformation perspective, or, you know, sort of a, you know, how do you, from an employee experience perspective, really reevaluating constantly, right? I think all of us should be doing this all the time, but I would really encourage the audience here to, to sort of really honestly reevaluate their current approach and see if there's opportunities for improvement. And obviously, right, I mean, what, as we put up on the slide there, if, if you'd like to get into more details about any of the areas that we talked about, or, you know, even, even if you, you know, whether you choose Alert Enterprise or not, I think the important thing is to start having those conversations, to start getting those ideas, and 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 to start implementing them. Um, one of the good, good things that one of the things that we see most often with our customers is that they don't they don't go all in all the time, right? 
Uh, sometimes they do, but a lot of times they'll start with one component. They may start with just visitor management, and then they may grow from that into other areas. Or they may start with, you know, employee management or contractor management, um, and and they may or they may start in a particular geographic area and then grow. And you know, certainly our solution is able to be modular enough that they can deploy any component and then grow to scale and meet the needs of their of your of, of our customers' businesses. So I would encourage you to. Do not, you know, do not do nothing, right? I would encourage you to look at it and 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 you know, evaluate both your internal processes as well as an evaluation of who can help you achieve the results that you're looking for. Amazing stuff. Um, thanks, John Shed. Uh, Jen, uh, over to you for our question and answer period. Awesome. Thank you so much, John Shed, John Shed, and uh, Willem for this awesome discussion today. Um, yes, we'll be moving now into our Q&A portion, um, but first I just want to take a minute to thank all attendees for coming today and then also for answering our poll questions. Um, so yes, if you have any questions, if you still have questions, um, please submit it via the question box. Um, but yes, to start off today, um, what build when building a business case for cyber physical security convergence, um, which departments should I engage? It's our first question. Oh, that is a great, great question. I think the, you know, what what we find in our customer scenarios is that, you know, it, it, in order to achieve convergence, at a minimum, right, the physical security team, the chief security officer team, has to communicate with the IT teams, right? So it's typically the chief information security, you know, officers and so on. So the CISO, CISO and the CSO, right? Oh, let's get those two mixed up. But you know, at, at a minimum, those two need to be tightly aligned. But also increasingly, in fact, I would say more often than not, we are seeing the involvement of other teams like the HR team um, or the contingent worker management team or the, the, you know, uh, the visitor you know, part of the, the, the security you know, staff and so on. So I think it's important to, you know, as, as you're looking at, uh, you know, at, at, at building, you know, as, as at the transformation of your access you know, policies and controls, building consensus, not just among the security office, but among the IT offices, and also increasingly the HR office and the HR functions, and of course the CFO functions, right? Because the CFO functions are driving the, 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 the value or the imperatives around both you know, efficiency from a financial perspective, but also they're achieving ESG objectives like we talked about, right? Environmental and sustainability objectives. Yeah, I think that's such a great opportunity for security to have impact across the entire organization. Um, and by collaborating and bringing those other functions in, it becomes truly a, um, you know, a business alignment across the organization to help move the business forward, um, not only from a safety and security perspective, but as we've already shown and demonstrated from a true value, um, real value for the business. So it's exciting. Awesome. Yes, very exciting. Um, okay, we do have another question here. Um, can you manage contractors and vendors within an identity access management platform? Yeah, I would say you know it's we we certainly can do that. You know, our our whole platform is built uh, on a, on a few core objects, and one of those core objects is identities. And the identity is any anybody who accesses the system, uh, who accesses the company or, and the building either physically or digitally so it could be you know it could be an employee it could be a contractor it could be a temp worker it could be a a you know a service staff that that manages the maintains the building it could be auditors who have you know who have need to access the building to perform their functions so uh, a, a, a holistic solution not just should not just can but should um, integrate all of those different aspects and 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 you know it, a lot of a lot of examples for example companies that do a lot of subcontracting they may they may employ or engage a person you know through one subcontractor and then the same person you know in the afternoon may you know as an air, as an airport for example right the same person might work at a starbucks location in the morning and then might work at a different location in the afternoon and you you even though they're coming in through two different subcontractors you have to be able to tie those two identities together and recognize that it's the same person so it's it's critically important that we're able to to bring all of these different identities into a single system and John said, as we see from the data, um, you know, this idea of this shift of the workforce, um, employees are moving towards more um, freelance, contingent uh, work uh, models, as well as companies uh, who are leveraging that 
in sort of you know these new environments. Um, so managing and, and and putting their arms around all of those identities, uh, providing the same level of security uh, and and lifecycle management for those identities as the permanent employees is really going to be critical for companies as they go uh, forward and digitally transform. But not only that, um, really welcome and invite all sorts of different types of the workforce into um, into their environment. And, and you know, protecting those identities is going to be huge. Um, so it's important that the, the platform does that. And Jen, do we have any other questions? We do. So we have, I believe we have time for about one more question. Um, can a single identity access management system connect to different physical access control systems in the same building or across uh, geographical regions? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, again, it's not something that it, it can do, but it should do, right? So, uh, you know, for example, for Alert Enterprise, we have over 250 connectors that are already built and available. So when we when we start to implement a customer on our solution, chances are that whatever physical access control system they are using, we already have connectors to. But just in case, you know, every once in a while we'll come across a customer that may have, you know, legacy systems that uh, we don't have a connector to. Well, typically we can we can connect to those. Uh, you know, we have a whole team that's dedicated to it, and we have a very open and flexible connector framework that allows us to build new connectors in as little as you know three to four weeks. Um, usually, it's between four to five weeks. I would say is, is is how long it takes us to build a brand new connector. And it could be if the if the physical access control system you know exposes APIs, we connect directly to the APIs. If not, we can act, connect to them in many different ways. Like if, for example, directly by exposing a database level view and so on. So it's very important that we are able to connect to all of that because you know within a building you may have multiple tenants, each of whom has its has their own. Uh, access control systems but even within the context of a company you might have multiple sites or even within a building again different access control systems because of you know the systems being acquired by different groups or or, or over time you know the, the, the buying needs have evolved or many times through you know m a mergers and acquisition type activities um, you know you get merged with two entities that have different systems and so the ability it's very expensive to rip and replace everything so the ability to be able to provide a management layer on on top of this environment the real life environment and being able to manage it in a unified way is critically important yeah i think leveraging current systems as we go into um, certain headwinds economically potentially uh, being able to leverage and get roi from your your existing technology stack is is a huge value proposition great well i think we should also point out that there's some material available for downloads right and on at the handouts on the site yeah that's right um we have a number of uh really helpful um uh, documents that you can uh, view there um that help you uh get a little bit of a more detailed a little bit of deeper dive um on consolidating packs visitor management um certain um capabilities around real estate services that we talked about today and then some some technical data sheets on the products that um, we're covered today, so please take uh, take the time to, uh, to to download that, and then you can contact us at the information um, on the screen, uh, info at alertenterprise.com. Of course, come visit us um, at alertenterprise.com. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, I guess it looks like we're out of time. If your question was not answered, um, we'll forward it to our speakers um, who can address it offline. Um, thank you again, gentlemen, for your talk today and to Alert Enterprise for sponsoring this webinar. And thank you to our audience for attending. A recording from today's session will be made available on our magazine's website, facilityexecutive.com and on alertenterprise.com. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.